What you're looking at here is the effect processing card that came out of my Bagheera V22. What I'm going to attempt to do in this video is show you how to modify the card so you can use one of the other algorithms that are built into the effect processing chip that is used on this card. The algorithm that the card comes pre-configured to use is the small hall algorithm and the one I prefer is the so-called spring reverb algorithm. That's uh, somewhat fitting and appropriate. So, um, let's have a look at what's going on here. This is the card, uh, this is my modified card, so yours isn't going to look the same. In particular, yours is going to not have that. Um, where you want to begin with this is on the back, there are a number of um, surface mount resistors that are found right in this area. I mentioned these on a previous video, but what we've got right there are R4, R5, um, R7, and R8. And those correspond to pins 5, 6, 7, and 8 on the uh, V1000 processing chip. That's where the configuration happens. For uh, processing. Let's uh, try to get a little bit closer up on that. Of course, mine's been thoroughly mutilated, so you're not going to be able to see um, what, it would look, what it looks like originally, but each of those five E1s is below a tiny surface mount resistor. If all you want to do is use the spring reverb algorithm rather than the small hall algorithm, all you need to do is um, lift the first three resistors. In other words, um, R4, R5, and R7. That will leave R8 in place, which will pull down um, pin 8 on the uh, effect processing chip, and that'll give you spring reverb. So, pretty easy mod to make. Um, Lift those chips, button everything back up, and you've got yourself a nice spiffy spring reverb. Which, to my ears, doesn't sound anything like a spring reverb, which, in my opinion, is a good thing. Uh, of course, your mileage will vary. Um, yeah, enough of that. Uh, oh, yeah, well, I guess, no, not quite enough of that. One additional comment about removing those... Um, those resistors. They're tiny little surface mount devices, and if you've never worked with a tiny little surface mount devices before, it is a new experience. The way I typically remove tiny little resistors is to start um, adding heat with a regular soldering iron to one pad, and just by thermal conduction, that other pad is going to go. So really, you only have to hit one pad at a time. So that's kind of the good news. They just kind of lift out of place fairly easily. Um, they're, these are really, really tiny devices, so it'll probably stick to your iron. And, um, you know, if you have any intention of reusing them, you're going to have kind of a hard time finding them and an even harder time putting them back in place. That's just a caveat. Um, another note about that. Thermal conduction, like I said, through the resistor will liberate the other side, the other pad, the one that you're not applying heat to. That also means that basically you don't need a lot of heat to uh, get one of these things loose. So if your iron slips when you're uh, working on one device and hits another one, you might find accidentally that you have removed two parts instead of one. So this is um, an operation that you want to take a certain amount of care on. Now, clearly, what I have here is something more elaborate than just uh, resistor removal. Now, what I've gone and done is added a 4 by 2 pin header to the card so that with jumpers, I can uh, configure this card to use any algorithm that is on the card, that is on the chip, pre-programmed on the chip. And uh, the program listing is available on the data sheet. I'll provide a link to that in the description below. Um, so, 
couple reasons I did this. One was to make it easy to experiment with different algorithms. The second reason I did this is I'm toying with the idea of possibly bringing um, a cable out to the front panel and using a rotary encoder to uh, have a rotary switch that'll actually let me use any of the 16 algorithms, including things like chorus and slapback echo and flanger and other things of questionable taste on the chip. There are a bunch of reverb programs as well and just other um, other uh, effects. None of them have any uh, parameter adjustment on them, so you like the sound, good. You don't, you're out of luck, but uh, something I'm playing, uh, contemplating doing. Uh, so let's look at what I have done to put this on here. This is, like I said, a 2x4 header. Uh, it's actually uh, a 2x4 header that I manufactured, but I suggest that you just get a 2x4 header. Uh, not a right angle header, though it looks kind of like a right angle header. What this actually is, is just a regular vertical mount header. And I have mounted it right up to the edge of the board. Let's try to get some images of that. And what you'll find is that, this is a 0.1 inch header, um, what you'll find is that they align, the um, the bottom row of pins, align to the bottom pads left by the uh, surface mount resistors closely enough that you can just tack solder them in place and uh, connect to the bottom row, bottom row of pins, the bottom row of pins. The bottom row of pins uh, are all going to be ground. In other words, the pads on the board edge side, those are uh, four grounds. The not ground side is this side, and what I did there was just carefully constructed some tiny wires to go from the header uh, right to each respective pad. Yeah, it's not brain surgery, but it's close. Um, and clearly, there's a reason I'm not a brain surgeon. Uh, but it works, and, you know, it's surprisingly strong. Uh, I don't have any concerns about this header pin uh, falling off. The, um, the connection, the mechanical connection via the uh, ground pads is sufficiently solid that I'm just, I'm not thinking that it's going to fall off. For touring, I wouldn't use the header that I have now. I would definitely go with a locking header. If I, uh, if I were to integrate this with a 16-position uh, encoder. Uh, but right now, um, this is going back in without uh, that uh, elaborateness. And um, what I've done is, just with a jumper, configured this baby for the spring reverb. So programming now is just a simple matter of most significant bit to least significant bit. So that's the most significant bit side. And that's about it. I hope uh, I hope what I've done is sufficiently clear that uh, you can manage to do this yourself if you want. A um, couple other things are worth mentioning on this board. Uh, one is that it uses a voltage record, a uh, <laughs> voltage regulator, a Kia 7805. Now these Kia 7805s, they work, they work fine, but there appears to have been one batch, or maybe multiple batches, uh, we don't know for sure, of the Kia 7815 that went into a different circuit in the V22, and that worked fine too with one, uh, with one exception. The thermal protection on those guys kicked in earlier than it should. Well, at least that's what the uh, that's what the internet says, and that caused the chip to uh, the voltage regulator to spontaneously reset. Um, and the solution to that problem was to either add a heat sink to the device uh, or to change the device to a uh, another brand or perhaps even the same brand, another batch, and or change the device and add a heat sink. Um, 
my particular amp did not come with the Kia device. I don't know who the maker was, but it was a metal t a metal pin um, voltage regulator device. So all I did to that was added a heat sink. Now I mention that because this regulator runs a little warm, just just warm, not not really hot. But uh, if it's something you're worried about, because the inside of the amp it's going to get hot, you know, no matter what, um, you might want to consider putting a uh, heat sink on that guy. Just make sure it clears all the parts. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is that uh, C4, which is right there. C4 is a output coupling cap. It comes right off the an op amp that uh, interfaces to the rest of the world. And it is a 47 microfarad cap. Um, forget the voltage rating. I believe it's uh, 25 volts. That's what my notes say anyway. 24 volt um, polarized 47 mic cap. Now, the problem with that is that uh, it's there's no bias across that cap. So um, what I've done on this board is I've replaced it with a 47 mic nonpolar a bipolar a 47 microfarad cap. Don't know if that'll make any difference in sound, but it might make the hap cap a little happier. Um, certainly can't hurt the sound. Um, but it's an interesting interesting that they didn't put a uh, nonpolar there stock because the um, values that I measured, voltages that I measured, there's there's no DC bias anywhere in sight. So as long as you've got this thing out, order yourself 47 mic. Uh, bipolar cap and replace C4. Apart from that, um, just plug this baby back in, button everything up, and treat yourself to a nice new reverb.